I get scared thinking about my good deeds and bad deeds because I don't know if I've accumulated more bad deeds than good deeds. Every single day, I'm living off of risk, not knowing if Allah's gonna be happy with me if I die today. If you're surrounded by people that don't really acknowledge the, the masjid or acknowledge their Islamic belief, you're not gonna be that attached to the religion itself. One of my friends, he doesn't pray, he does this and that, but I would always hang out with him. Me following him, being in the same circle as him, I think that's what made me get out of my deen. It's hard to not have a father figure in your life and also find the snap. Assalamu alaikum everybody. Uh, my name is Muhammad and this is Nuruddin. And today we're going to be starting our first ever podcast, inshallah, with many more to come. We'll be talking a lot about Islam and a lot of youth-related topics and I hope you enjoy. Who's your favorite uh, Islamic speaker? I have a couple. I watch a lot of Sheikh Uthman. Uthman uh, yes. uh, I watch, you know, Muhammad Hijab. He's one of oh, my favorites. Yeah, I love him. Abu Taymiya, I love Abu Taymiya. Yeah, Abu Taymiya is amazing. I look up to him. He's one of my favorite and also Muhammad Hijab. Yeah. We need more men to be like him. Not scared of what people think, not scared of what the media says. Like people like him, subhanAllah, I really want to be like him too. One day, inshallah. Have you seen uh, that one uh, brother? He he made his like life goal to find a mistake in the Quran. And, and after, he converted. Yes, yeah, yeah, after yeah. reading the Quran to find a mistake, a single mistake, he converted to Islam. Yeah, yeah I, I, I did see that, so, subhanAllah. And there's a... There's a I've there's a lot of Muslim reverts that have be, that have gone into da'wah. Mm -hmm. They they read the Quran, they fi they find out that there's nothing wrong with it. They convert to Islam, study it, and then become uh, and then do da'wah. Imam Tom, <laughs> he's a revert and he he's amazing. He's an Imam. He's like uh, Subhanallah. I want to be like him. I want to be like Imam Tom to go go to Medina and then learn about. Oh my Subhanallah. It's 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 it's, it's inspiring, you know. That's what that's what motivates me. <laughs> that's that's what I want to be. And inshallah, I build enough discipline to become like them. Me too. So going to the youth, you're not going to be that attached to the religion itself. And I think that's the hardest part in, in America. Yeah. Because you make friends, all these friends, most of them are going to be non-Muslims. And so you build a relationship with them and you forget about all the Muslim friends you can make in the masjid. And building that relationship with your Muslim brothers will give you that motivation to go to the masjid. And then that builds on to the discipline. My mom asked me, she was like, why don't you go to, to the masjid for Maghrib and Isha? You know, you don't have work at that time. And I, I thought to myself, I was like, why not? You're right. Why don't I go to the masjid? I have the free time. I have the, I, I have the car to go to the masjid. Why don't I do it? I questioned myself at that moment. I was like, why? In my mind, I tried to come up with an excuse, but there was no excuse to come up with. And it's like, that's where it starts. If you have somebody at home, if your parent or your sibling is like, we should do this. Why don't you do this? That's where it starts. And it's like, we should motivate each other, inshallah, and build upon that discipline. And inshallah, that furthers us in the future. So during uh, summertime, I was like really, like actually trying to work on my dean, right? Praying five times a day, limiting myself from listening to music, everything. But my surroundings was keeping me behind. It was one of my friends, he doesn't pray, he does this and that, but I would always hang out with him. And I think that me following him, being in the same circle as him, I think that's what made me get out of my deen and since I stopped hanging out with them as much Alhamdulillah you know I've been focusing on my deen so what motivate what motivated you to get back on your deen bro just fearing Allah bro like every single day I'm living off of risk not knowing if Allah's gonna be happy with me if I die today and for my own benefit honestly like things that Allah says are haram there's a reason back behind it music actually like changes my mind it's like the words that they say the everything you know the instruments the way they your heartbeat changes to every beat yes have you have you seen the um, the water vibration like uh, yeah, yeah, music yeah. Our, bro, yeah our body is made out of 75 percent water so it reacts to that music that you listen to yes, exactly that's yeah that's that's also interesting i get scared thinking about my you know my good deeds and bad deeds because i don't know if i've accumulated more bad deeds than good deeds you know and but i, I as i look back and as i research it you have to not want to go to Jannah to go to Jahannam. Yeah, yeah. It's quite literally almost impossible to be a Muslim and go to Jahannam because at, at some point every every Muslim will go to Jannah. Yeah. But when when you think about it, for every good deed you do, you get 10 good deeds. And for every sin, you get one. And at certain times, it's multiplied by seven. And during Ramadan, it's multiplied by more. How can you go to Jahannam? How? For every time you get sick, you get hasanat. 
you, every time you get injured, you get hasanat. How can you go to Jahannam? SubhanAllah. It's, it's amazing to think about that. Yeah, bro. Allah is really the most merciful. Most merciful. I think also people like, they overthink and they don't know that Allah is literally like the most forgiving. If I ask Allah right now, Allah, yeah, Allah, please forgive me. Allah will forgive me, you know. If you just have the intention that you won't do the sin again, Allah is the most merciful. Like, SubhanAllah. That's why also one thing is that before I die, let's say, I really want to say the shahada. I, yeah, I, w I wish to surround myself with friends that before my last breath, they remind me to say yes. the shahada. SubhanAllah. I'm there, I'm here for you. <laughs> SubhanAllah. I appreciate you, you know. So, what could the masjid do to bring in more youth? Yeah, there's definitely some things, you know, that can open people's mind and get them into the mosque, you know, like the youth group. Um, I think one of them could be uh, bringing speakers in. Speakers would be amazing. And I feel like speakers that more people know would be even better. Speakers that the youth relate to. Some of them that we talked about, uh, I, would enjoy, I would enjoy them coming in. More programs, definitely. If we can get that to be spread around more and have more people during Jama'a pay attention to what we say, I feel like we can get so much youth there. Yeah. We try to do stuff that, you know, bonds us to give, to make that relationship. And it's like, if we can get more people, more youth to come in, we can, we can definitely build that large, large group of, of friendship that we can, you know, motivate each other to do yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. You know how like the bigger messages that are, you know, that have a lot more funds, they have like their own courts and stuff in the masjid. Think about it. If you can get more youth to come in and play in the courts and, you know, just have fun there, but also have an Islamic like leader there that's with them, guiding them. I feel like the amount of youth that are going to the masjid will increase and skyrocket. Yes, yes. I so agree. why do you think it would be beneficial for like more youth to come into the masjid? Uh, many reasons. One of them, the very important one is that future. From that age where you start being on your deen, that's going to play a big role in the future. I think that's one of the important things. If if we can have more leaders in our in our Muslim youth mm -hmm. that grow up to become leaders in our Muslim community, I that's it's beautiful cuz like right now what we're seeing is a lack of youth in the masjid. Yes. And with that lack, who's going to lead the masjids in the future? In the future yeah. If we can get one of our youth mm -hmm. to become an imam inshallah, it it will it will build our community even more and it'll make it easier for us to to, you know, expand as a community. The reason why you that, that are, that are going to turn into adults are moving away from Islam is that they don't learn Islam from a young age. They're, they're not on their deen at a young age. That's why more people joining the youth group would be very, very important. And that's 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 the problem with the youth. They, they don't have that person to tell them or to show them what is right. What is right. Like a lot of us, uh, me personally, I don't have a father figure in my life, but I had a bunch of people that were you know, that stepped in, my uncles, uh, a lot of the friends at the masjid as well. You know, Brother Ibrahim, he's stepping in as a father figure for most people that don't have one. Yeah, It's hard to not have a father figure in your life and also find the slap. Because, you know, uh, you'll, ha you'll have that part in your life missing. But if you have somebody to follow, I followed my mother. She would teach me everything. And it's like, I'm so thankful that she was still there to be able to teach me. If I didn't have that, who knows who I would be now? Who knows? Yeah, I mean, same as me, uh, majority of my life, I didn't have a father. Um, my mom was with four children on her back, carrying us from Malaysia to United States. And especially in United States, New York, it's a scary place for, not just for Muslims, for everyone. And subhanAllah, my mom, she's a very, a very strong woman, appreciate her. And she would always teach what's good and what's bad. Being able to follow her footsteps, it's a big impact. Yeah, definitely. And that leads right back to our main issue of yes. why the youth don't go to the masjid. Yeah. And why it would be amazing for them to go to. Because if, if they have that path to follow, their children will follow that path. And their children will follow that right, as well. Right. And it's like, you need that person in your life to show you what is right and what's wrong. If you were in front of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam right now, what is one thing or many things you would talk to him about or question him or anything? Man, uh, that's hard. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what I would say. 
I, I think the the first thing I'd say is is probably thank you. You know? He led us to what we believe in right now. And subhanAllah, what else can you say? I would be flabbergasted. I would have no idea what to say. I'd just probably start bawling my eyes out. <laughs> no, yeah, 100%. I think I'd probably just burst into tears, man. Make sure you guys click the subscribe button and the like button. And make sure to comment and give us some more topics that we can talk about. And uh, Jazakumullah khair. Inshallah, we'll see you next time. May Allah bless you and have a good day.